Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. In this segment, we will adjust the valve clearance on our uh, mechanical lifter valves. The first thing you need to do is we'll start with the number one cylinder, which is the rear cylinder on the uh, right side of the engine as you uh, line yourself with the crank. So this is number one, two, three, and four. So we first thing we do is bring the number one cylinder up to top dead center on the compression stroke, which means that uh, the piston will be all the way to the top of its stroke with both valves closed. You'll do that by turning the crank. I just use a socket wrench on the bolt on the end of the crank there. As you turn the crank or have your helper turn the crank, you'll shine a flashlight down the uh, spark plug hole here. Watch the piston as it comes up. You'll be able to see that both valves are closed and then just as the piston comes up and stops and starts to move away and then just back it up until you get it right to that point where it's right at the top and then you're ready to set your valves. So once you get your crankshaft turned, cylinders at top dead center, both valves are closed, we're ready to set our clearance. Now on the normally aspirated Aero-V engine, both valves, intake and exhaust, are set to six thousandths cold clearance. So for this installation, we'll use our six thousandths feeler gauge, and we'll be able to set both of these valves using the same feeler gauge. If you're building a turbo engine, the valve clearance is different. It's called out in the manual. You actually set the uh, exhaust valve different from the intake on the turbo engine and you'll use two different feeler gauges, but uh, the process itself is uh, identical as far as the, uh, the process that you do. So let me start with the exhaust valve here. We we'll use our screwdriver to turn the adjuster in and out. What we're gonna do is just re relax it enough to get our feeler gauge in there. Make sure it slides in nice and easy, and then we're just gonna bring it up as we slide our feeler gauge back and forth gradually. And we're just gonna bring it up until we feel a pretty good drag. We don't wanna capture it so tight that it will not move. But we wanna get it pretty close there. So we just get some nice drag on there. Feels pretty tight. And we'll stop there. We'll hold that. Bring our lock nut up until it's snug. Still got our good clearance. I'm gonna just lay my feeler gauge right down on the valves like that. Need a wrench that fits the uh, locking nut. This particular one is a 13 millimeter wrench. Some of these rocker arms will have a 15 millimeter nut here depending on uh, the manufacturer uh, and the vendor. So uh, just whichever wrench fits your particular application, we'll use that to lock it. You're gonna to wanna to hold the adjuster so that it doesn't turn as you lock the nut. So just a little pressure on the adjuster. Snug that up nice and snug. Take your feeler gauge, make sure you still got a good snug fit there. And your valve is set. Now you can go over to the other valve and do the same thing. You'll back it off enough so that you've got room to get your feeler gauge in there. Uh, remember on these ball style rocker arms, there is a little flat on that ball that needs to be against the stem of the valve, so you wanna make sure that that flat is properly aligned. If you do the clearance without that flat being aligned properly, as the rocker arm works, at some point that flat will end up being aligned properly and then your clearance is gonna be way too wide. So you wanna make sure your, your uh, little swivel ball is aligned properly. Put your feeler gauge in there. Bring her up till she's nice and snug but not overly tight. Hand tighten your lock nut. Just lay the feeler gauge down right there. Put my wrench on. Set my screwdriver in to hold the adjuster while I tighten the jam nut. Bring her up nice and snug. Once again, check to make sure our gauge is still 
snugly rubbing back and forth in there and your valve is set. You'll notice on this initial setting that these adjusters seem to be uh, quite a ways out and that's good because the first few hours you run this engine you'll retorque the heads a couple of times and that'll uh, tighten everything up as the engine seats in and that'll reduce this clearance so you'll have to reset the valves uh, a couple of times in the first 10 hours of operation and this gives you enough adjustment to make sure that you've uh, got an, enough to uh, take up that uh, wear. So your valves are set all you'll do now is just go on to your next uh, cylinder rotate the engine so that that cylinder is at top dead center with both valves closed and repeat the process all the way around the engine.